The Pixel 7 Pro is good, it's really good, but will it be good enough to make me want to switch from using my iPhone 14? So this video is gonna be interesting, I think. I've not used anything other than an iPhone for over a decade, 2009 or 2010, I seem to recall. And the phone I used then was a BlackBerry, which shows you how long ago it was since I've used anything other than an iPhone. So when I began unboxing this and using it, I didn't know what I was getting into, I really didn't. And in this video, we're gonna go through everything that I found through the setup, using the cameras, and what it's been like as a day today phone. It hasn't got a main SIM card in it, but that, for actually that is the first thing to mention. Muscle memory is an odd thing. I've had these two phones on my desk side by side now for about a month. And even though I've got all of the apps that I need to generally use on the Pixel 7, I still find myself reaching for the iPhone. It's the oddest thing. I have to remind myself, convince myself to pick up the Pixel and see how I get on with it. The setup was really, really straightforward. I didn't know what I was gonna find it like, but it was super straightforward. The only thing that surprised me was it got really hot during the setup. It didn't take long to do, and I'm not saying the phone was untouchably hot, but it was certainly noticeable enough that I, I stood back and thought, wow, that's unusual. So it got very, very hot, but it did set up really, really quickly. Once I started to sign into some of my accounts, like my Gmail account and my YouTube Studio account, the phone then started to feel a bit more like mine. And I felt more inclined to want to begin to use it. And don't forget, this is also the first time I've used an OS, an operating system that hasn't been iOS in all that time as well. This has got the G2 Tensor chip on it and it's running Android 14. And everything's been really, really snappy and quick to respond. So far, I really liked how it just feels and operates. That's been a real surprise to me because I thought iOS would be far and away better but no, I really enjoyed so far the experience of Android and the general process of setting the phone up as well. So next I was gonna look at design with you. When we start looking at design, you're talking to somebody that's been so used to holding an iPhone for all these years. When I first got this out of the box, I wasn't sure about it, but it started to grow on me pretty quickly. It's glossy both back and front. They call this, for some reason, they call this hazel. Um, to you and me, it's great. It comes in two other colors as well, obsidian and snow. So basically it comes in gray, white, and black. It looks a lovely color. It, the fingerprints aren't too bad in it, but it is glossy back and front. But it feels, because of these curved edges, it feels really, really tactile and lovely to hold. The trouble is that because it feels so good to hold, <laughs> it kind of comes at a price because it just feels like it's an expensive accident waiting to happen. I don't use cases. I haven't used cases on my iPhones for years and years. But if I was gonna be using this every day, then I think I'd be tempted to get a case on it. It just feels, as I say, like you want to hold it, you want to touch it, but because it's so slippy, I worry about it just falling out of pockets and things like that. That glossy front and back just makes it a little bit more accident prone, or at least the feeling that it could be accident prone at least. The camera layer on the back, again, took a bit of getting used to. Of course, it's got this kind of sun visor design or banner across the top. Now, the actual layout of the cameras are quite like, and it does mean because it's less bumpy on the back, it sits a lot better on the desk. The iPhone, as you know, wobbles around an awful lot, whereas this does sit quite nicely on the desk. So the sun visor thing, I'm not so sure about, but the actual layout of the cameras and the fact they protrude less, I actually quite like. The battery life, of course, is important to talk about, and I've been used to iPhones for all this time, and iPhones get a really hard time for how bad their batteries are. Now, as I said, this isn't my daily phone. I'm not using it for all those sort of heavy things, such as fitness tracking and workouts, streaming audio to the car via Apple CarPlay, navigation. I'm not using it for any of that, and yet I'm surprised that when I use it, how quickly it's running down to under 50%. Google say that it's a 24 hour plus battery, but on um, my findings so far, as I say, considering I'm not using it heavily, I don't think you'd get 24 hours out of this. I really don't. And by comparison to the iPhone and all I put that through, I actually think that the iPhone's battery feels, at least, as if it would be longer lasting. Might be a hunch. I might be forever wrong if I was using this all of the time, but it just seems to dip ever so quickly. It charges via USB-C, of course, which is great. It feels very easy to pick up a USB-C cable. I've got those knocking around everywhere. I hate lightning cables as much as the next person, but a few weeks ago, uh, you might remember that I bought my first MagSafe charging tree, a Belkin tree. And now that I'm using MagSafe, really having any cables out is, a, it just looks uncluttered and it looks messy. I don't like it. 
So that is a big win for iPhone, being able to use MagSafe. But one of the things you do get on here is a little makeup is you get reverse charging. So you can charge things, although it will clearly affect the battery life, but you can reverse charge on reverse wirelessly charge off the back of your Pixel 7 Pro. I found all sorts of small little quality of life improvements to this phone. For instance, when you are charging down the bottom of the screen, you get in small print how long it's gonna to take to get to the full charge. And then if you look in a control center or whatever it's called, old habits die hard, but you know, the, the sort of the nuts and bolts, the engine room of the phone, when you look in there and it's charging, it will equally tell you how much charge, how long your charge is going to last. So all those little tiny things that the Pixel 7 does, I really, really like. It just feels like it's more in touch with you, if that makes sense. The speakers on here really aren't good. There's no way of getting away from it. If you're comparing them side by side and you're going to listen for any length of time to the speakers on the phone, you'll be spoiled by the ones on iPhone. The speakers on here are thin and tinny. Okay, I don't listen to content that often through the speakers on, an, on the phone itself, but if you wanted to, you'd find this annoying. They've got no guts to them really at all. You do get adaptive audio on here and you also get spatial audio if your wired in headphones or your Bluetooth earbuds support it. And the earbuds that I paired up to this, pairing them up was every bit as simple as it is on iPhone as well. Really straightforward and easy to use. And the call quality, as you can tell, is just fine. Hello, mate. Uh, oh, well, what have you gone and done? <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be gutting a bloody Android phone. Here I am actually enjoying it. Yeah, it's a danger, isn't it? And then, uh, yeah, and that's probably not the best Android that you're trying. It is one of the best, but uh, yeah. So how are you? How are you finding it? Well, I was reluctant, but I've got to tell you, the the process on it is so quick. Everything just opens and works so so quickly. Yeah. I assume that iOS is the best, and suddenly I realise there's another way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, it's the thing, right? If you, if you use something for so long, I think there's, a, there's an element of maybe being bored with iOS, but uh, Android has come a long way, I think, uh, in the recent years. It is. I, I was saying earlier in the video, this weird thing of muscle memory. Even when the two phones are sitting side by side, I still reach for the iPhone. Even though Twitter's on both of them, Telegram's on both of them, I still reach for the old standby, the old habit. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. This has been a really good experience. I'm really, really enjoying it. So awesome. that's something else I'm big for me. And who better to do the call cool quality check with than the owner of this phone, actually, Alex, my buddy Alex. We do the podcast together, Minus 16. We do it every fortnight. It's over on its own channel here on YouTube. You can also find it as an audio-only podcast on Spotify, on Google, and on Apple Podcasts as well. And don't forget to check out his channel. While you've got that sub finger all primed and ready, go and give Alex a sub as well. He makes weekly videos there, down-to-earth tech videos, and they are brilliant, really worth watching. He does a lot on Samsung phones as well. So if you've enjoyed this Android review, you might enjoy what Alex does over there. And this is being recorded on the Pixel 7 Pro, of course. It is being recorded. I tried it in HDR, but I didn't like the results in HDR. So this is in 4K 30. As you know, they don't do 24. Uh, it won't be processed at all, so you'll get an idea of what the, at least in the interior in my studio, my podcast studio here, what the results are like straight off of the video from the Pixel Pro 7 or Pixel 7 Pro. Hell, I got the name right. If you've been enjoying this video, why don't you take a look at a few of the others on my channel? I think you might enjoy those as well. And if you do find that they're giving you something of value and you are enjoying them, you know I'm going to say a subscription really would help. I know you've heard creators bang on probably forever and a day about that sub helping. Until I was in this position, I didn't realize the difference it makes. These channels aren't cheap to run and they're not easy. And to make that growth, I need your sub. It's as simple as that. By giving that sub, liking, sharing, it just helps YouTube put this video in front of more people. The channel grows quicker and I can get my hands on more products to review for you and just keep making these videos every week. And also, if you're liking the content that I've got on these videos, I'm also live streaming weekly at the moment as well. On a Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. BST, I'm live streaming for around about an hour and we just talk 
anything that comes up really, it's down to you. We start off talking about some Apple stuff, we might talk audio, we might talk anything to do with tech and gadgets. So if that sounds like it's something of interest to you, It'd be lovely to catch you, 3.30 p.m. BST on a Wednesday afternoon. Time to talk cameras now, which is, of course, the part that everyone's interested in. And the specs on the Pixel 7, when you look at the specs of the cameras, it would suggest you're going to get a phone and camera setup that's very similar to iPhone 14 Pro. And to be honest, you do. The picture, the colours certainly are so vibrant, they're so warm, they're so rich and intense. They look lovely of this Pixel 7 straight out of the box. They looked absolutely fantastic before I started fiddling. Where I found it struggled a little bit was in keeping up with lighting conditions. So say if the sun was to go in and you're in the middle of doing a number of shots, the iPhone seems to be more consistent through that, whereas the Pixel 7 Pro varied a little bit more. But that was a fairly small little niggle to pick up on. Overall, the camera was great. I love how quickly it opens up and it doesn't seem to be any noticeable or appreciable delay in the shutter lag either. So again, it comes back to this processor that's in this phone and the operating system. Everything seems really snappy and really quick. You get all the normal features that you'd expect. You get the portrait mode, you get the image stabilization, motion mode, all those bits and bobs that you'd come to expect on a phone, of a high-end phone, camera phone like this. And of course, you can shoot in 0.5, one times, two times, or five times. There's even a 30 times zoom on there if you want to try using it, although the results are very artifacty. I didn't particularly like it, but at least it has got a meaningful zoom on there if you wanted to use it. I've mentioned that some great quality of life features that I found on this phone, like the battery charging one, with another one on the photo app that's got almost like spirit level thing. And when you open the photo app up, it tells you if you've got your horizon straight, which I think is a really neat little feature. And the Pixel 7 is full of that kind of functionality. I really, really like that about it. And the photo app has got a load of great editing tools in there as well. It's got white balance, black balance. You can do all sorts of things in there a really comprehensive range of editing tools that you possibly, if you don't want to go into Lightroom, you could get away with just editing in the photo app itself. Switching over now to the video side of the camera, you can shoot in 4K 60 or 4K 30, but you can't shoot in 4K 24, which is how I generally shoot. But the quality of the video you get, again, the colors are good, the audio sounds fine, and it's a good experience to use. I didn't have any problems at all, and I'd be more than happy to use the videos that I get off of the Pixel 7 in these videos. It looks a really good quality video setup. And overall, although the iPhone, I think, does win the battle of the head-to-head -head cameras, not by much. I thought the gap between this and the 1,700 pound iPhone that I've got would be far greater than it is. But to be honest, the camera setup on this Pixel 7 was one of its big surprises to me. It's ever so, ever so good. First of all, let's take a look at the video and audio quality. This is being shot on the main camera on the Google Pixel Pro 7. I haven't had a chance to look at this yet until I get back in and start editing, so I'll be interested to see what my skin tone's like, what the voice is like, what the audio's like. I'm sitting in a fairly quiet location in decent daylight, so you should get a good idea of what the video quality is like. Next, we're gonna go over to my iPhone 14 Pro. So just seconds later, and now on the iPhone 14 Pro in exactly the same location as you can see, in the same daylight conditions, I'm using the main camera on the iPhone 14 Pro. And the only difference is I'm shooting this in ProRes. So it'll be, even for these few seconds, it'll be a fairly large file. I'll let you know what the file size is. But again, it'd be interesting to hear what the audio's like, what my skin tone's like, and how the native video quality of these two phones compare. And if you can hear helicopters above me, that's because I think I must be on the flight path back from Silverstone. It's been the Silverstone British Grand Prix today, and it seems a load of my neighbours have been at the Grand Prix and are flying back to their, to their big mansions. I'm not in one of those mansions, but uh, yes, yeah, so that helicopter with somebody flying back from Silverstone. Anyway, you should see how these two video qualities compare from the iPhone 14 Pro to the Google Pixel Pro 7.
The Pixel 7 also has a couple of little party tricks up its sleeve as well. And one of those is speech to text. I'd heard it was good, but I wasn't prepared for it to be this good. One of the Pixel 7 Pro's party pieces is without doubt its speech to text abilities. And just look how quickly it's picking up on this. It's absolutely phenomenal how quick and how accurate it's picking this up. It's stunning. Even if I throw in something unusual, like say, I don't know, a tennis player's name as Wimbledon's on, Novak Djokovic. And apart from the capital D, just look how well it's done on this. This is impressive, deeply impressive. It's so sharp, it's so accurate as well. I think that's what amazed me the most. It just keeps up with everything that I was saying. And I would be, I would be happy to begin to rely on that. I really would. Just seeing how quickly it works amazed me. As I say, I'd, I'd heard it was good. I just didn't think it would be this good. And that kind of leads me around to one of the other features that, don't forget, I haven't used another voice assistant other than Siri. I've only got iPhones and I've only got HomePods. I've never used another voice assistant. I'd heard how bad Siri was, but not until this last month and using the Pixel 7 Pro did I realize how bad it was. You've got the speech to text, which is brilliant in itself as an AI tool. But then the Google Assistant was so much quicker and gave so much more detail quickly as well compared to Siri. I asked it some basic, simple questions and Google Assistant just smashed it every time. Hey Google, how much do the first round losers win at Wimbledon? According to Perfect Tennis, the prize money distribution for 2023 continues the trend of heavily remunerating the earlier rounds to give lower ranked players a financial boost. For example, first round losers receive £55,000 this year, a 10.00% rise compared to 12 months ago. Hey Siri, hmm? how much do the first round losers win at Wimbledon? Looking at the cloud software that kind of goes behind the scenes with these phones, obviously I'm a big user of iCloud, but to get the photos off of this Pixel 7, the only way I could work out to do it was to upload them and sync them to my Google Photo Drive. And it was done instantly. The minute I got back from the shoot, the photos were in the drive. Even though I don't use my Google Drive an awful lot, it was seamless. Now, I did have a bad day with Apple, the day before shooting this video. For some reason, the iPhone wouldn't sync. It got stuck and it's done that before. You, I had to turn off sync, switch it back on again and do a full reboot. Then it freed itself up and my photos began to sync to iCloud. But it took a couple of hours as opposed to Google Drive. It was there instantly. And also I went to open the Photos app on my MacBook Air and the Photos app just wouldn't open. Still doesn't now. Don't know why. I've never signed into it on that Mac before. But for some reason, it just doesn't want to open. So I had a bad day with Apple uh, just yesterday and say just before recording this video, whereas Google absolutely shone and everything worked seamlessly. So it was just one of those days that it, everything was made to look good for Google. So would I switch out to using the Pixel 7 Pro all the time? No, but not for the reason that you're probably thinking. It's not because it's not a great phone. It's just that ecosystem. It's got me absolutely hooked in. I couldn't Imagine walking away from AirDrop, from iMessage, from Handoff, and even being able to use the remote control on the iPhone for Apple TV. All of those little things just begin to add up. And of course, it, for me, it's more than just iPhone. It's also the Mac world that I live in as well. Everything just works, apart from yesterday. Everything just works really, really well and seamlessly. And it's that old kind of saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. For me, Apple does everything I want it to do. But... If I was buying this for a friend or a relation or something in the family that didn't have the whole Apple fence around them, and they wanted to buy a lot of phone for not a lot of money, at the moment it's 150 pounds off this phone, which I think means in the UK, it's down from 900 pounds to 750 pounds. The only thing that surprised me was the lack of storage options. You can only get it with a maximum of 256 gigs of storage on. Again, if I'm wrong, please let me know, but I could only find 256 as being the top storage option. That surprised me as it's their pro phone. But all of that phone for 750 pounds, my iPhone 14 Pro cost twice as much, more than twice as much as that. Okay, it has got a terabyte of storage on, but even so we hear that the pro iPhones are gonna get a price hike this year, which makes this phone look even better value for money. There's so much that I enjoyed using about this phone and so much that I now think Apple just needs to 
draw breath and assess where they're at. So I'm going to be staying Apple, but that's not to say that the Pixel 7 didn't really surprise me. It is ever such a good phone. Honestly, give it a go. If you've got a moment or two spare and you've enjoyed this video, don't forget that sub would be lovely. There's going to be a couple of videos at the end that you might be interested in. One where I take a closer look at what's going to happen next with AirPods Max and also a closer look at the studio display that I use every day and love. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.